Hello, everyone. My name is Al Nemirovsky. In this episode of On the Record, I am sitting with Lindsay Hanna, Digital Content and Web Design Specialist at Ryerson University. Hello, Lindsay. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Thank you. So what is your role as a digital content and web design specialist, and where has this job and your career taken you? I started at Ryerson um, in the School of Journalism as a radio and television specialist, and then the digital world started coming around, and they needed somebody who could work with the students on different multimedia apps, um, preparing multimedia content for their items to go online, and also the school had a huge need for digital website development themselves. So um, my role kind of spans the two different areas where I support students in producing content, but I also make things like the digital signage that you see around the building. Um, I did that and I'm also responsible for the campus, for our school newspaper, for their website, the magazine has a website, also the school's main websites, all of those kinds of things. So now there's so many ways to build a website nowadays, some obviously harder, some are easier. What are some tools or some websites that you might recommend for students who are looking to build a website? So we've really uh, leveraged WordPress around here at the school. So we have our own servers at the school where we host WordPress.org. If you look into it, there's actually two different versions of WordPress. There's WordPress.com, which you can do some things for free, and then WordPress.org requires your own server. So that's the version that we've built on here at the school for a couple of reasons. Um, it's one of the most popular website builders out there, so it means there's a lot of programmers and developers working on different tools for it, which gives us a lot of options when we're building a website. Um, and, and also it's relatively inexpensive to run. Um, and finally, some of the news organizations are actually using a version of WordPress to create their, their websites. So we want to prepare our students on platforms that they'll use when they go out in the real world. All right. Now, do you believe that there are any website building solutions for students who might not necessarily know how to code or work around a platform like WordPress and any that could possibly be budget friendly? Um, quite honestly, WordPress would work even for somebody who doesn't know code. There's a lot of different tools out there now, drag and drop editors, and um, WordPress is recently updated to a new editor that is all um, blocks. So you add in different blocks for different elements, and it's, it's pretty simple. I didn't know how to code when I started um, here at the school. I was a journalism grad with a background in television and radio, so um, a WordPress was actually self-taught to me, and I was able to do a lot of that without code. And like I said, there is a free version of WordPress that you can use, but if you wanted to build something on your own at a high school, to run a WordPress website for a year, you're looking at about $100 a year, and that's with the domain name. So I think that's relatively inexpensive um, for, for a school to be able to pay. We haven't really looked into some of the completely free solutions. Um, I know there are a ton of different website builders out there, Wix and, and all of those that have yeah. some really flashy templates. If, if that's something you want to give a try, absolutely. They've got templates out there that would work. WordPress does have a lot of components that work specifically for news. And possibly most importantly, what do you think would be the single most important aspect of a captivating and engaging news website? Um, imagery, for sure. Photography uh, the, is often the first thing people see when they come to the website. So having really great images to work with can often make a website. But truthfully, if you're telling really important, engaging stories, people will read the content no matter what. I would make sure that it's also mobile friendly. And um, a lot of people are coming to your websites on devices, especially when they're accessing them by, you know, they're being referred from sites like Twitter and Facebook, where people really are looking at them on a phone. So make sure the content's engaging, the photos are good, and um, that people can engage and interact with the stories. Right. And nowadays, with millions of web pages showing up in people's search engine results, it could be quite hard to be noticed uh, on the internet. Now, do you know of any tricks or tips or tools even that students can utilize to make sure that when people are searching for their uh, news websites that they always show up at the top of everyone's searches? Yeah, so you, you want to make sure if you're using a tool like WordPress, and this would apply to any of the other website builders, they'll have search engine optimization tools, so SEO tools. Make sure that you're utilizing that as much as you can, that you're putting in good descriptions for your stories um, so that they're showing up higher in, in Google search results. 
but I would say also harnessing the power of social media to share your stories. If you know, it, it depends on what the latest tool is. Like we're all hearing Facebook is kind of falling off, but a lot of people are still accessing news stories through Twitter. And I know here at the school, we get about 30% of our um, referrals and activity from Twitter. So making sure that you're sharing stories in different ways when you can and, and getting it out there. And finally, do you have any other important or interesting information that you think um, high school newspapers should be equipped with when dealing with uh, websites? Um, I, th I think the most important thing I would say to anybody is don't be afraid to try. I think people sort of shy off and say, well, I'm not a coder, I can't build a website. I was not a developer who knew all this code when I started. I knew that there were tools out there and I'm really great at research and I can often troubleshoot a problem. So give it a try because I always tell my students there's isn't anything we can't reverse online. If you've made a mistake, we go back, we undo that mistake, and, and we start again. So um, don't be afraid to try. Don't say just because you're a high school student who doesn't know code, you can't build a website. You just need to publish that story online and get it out to people to read, and, and you're doing the right thing. I'm Alan Nemirovsky, and this has been another episode of On the Record, a series by the Canadian Youth Journalism Project.